Hello, this is Demon Phoenix with another Witcher 3 build video, this time based around the Viper set. Now, this is a hybrid build and it's based around the Viper set, which is an absolutely gorgeous set of armour. It looks like the Kaer Morin starting armour that it's based on, and this build uses the chest piece. So the thing with the Viper armour is it's from Hearts of Stone and not Blood and Wine. Now, when I was looking at how to build around the Viper armour, it doesn't have a specific perk like the Blood and Wine Grandmaster sets, but it does have really high resistances, so even though it's a medium armour, it's more comparable to the Ursine heavy armour set of resistances than anything else. So we have the Tucson Knight Steel Sword and Erendite, both with Severance, and we have the Viper Armour with Deflection. Now this has really good slashing damage resistance, very high elemental and monster damage resistance at plus 40% for each. The set's rounded out with the Griffin Grandmaster set pieces for the trousers, boots and the gauntlets, and that gives the three set perk of being able to cast signs, regular signs twice for each time your stamina is full, so you can cast Igni and then Quen, or you can cast Igni twice, or Erden and Quen, or any combination like that. This is a really versatile and really fun build, and I've really fallen in love with it whilst I've been using it with a playthrough, it's a lot of fun. So it uses Water Hag Decoction, and we have Heightened Tolerance, and it has the Aracast Decoction, which combines with the Viper's Resistances and Protective Coating to really reduce the damage in much the same way as the tank build does. It also has Heightened Tolerance, and that allows us to use Potions and the Water Hag Decoction together, and we have Greater Glyph of mending to have re re uh, regeneration of vitality uh, in all of these slots on the boots, trousers and gauntlets. It has all of the first three fast and strong attack abilities so we have rend and whirl and greatly increased damage and we have far reaching ard and ard sweep and delusion to boost the sign intensity even further than euphoria does and to give us even more stamina regeneration. So we have acquired tolerance, it's your standard, but we also fit height and tolerance on this build, so like I say, we can use potions, and this is really like using the build as a true witcher and being able to use all of the combat abilities, but also being able to use signs and potions and everything else that goes along with it. Then we have Griffin School Techniques, Metabolic Control, to give us more toxicity to use those, and to give us higher sign intensity and especially stamina regeneration, to give us that versatility of using signs. Have really good resistances for everything apart from the piercing damage and the bludgeoning, there is no bludgeoning protection on this armor so you have to be very careful when fighting uh, golems or elementals and especially human enemies in a crowd with a club you need to make sure that you hit those first because they will do massive damage if they hit you without Quen. It's not a problem though because you can easily keep Quen up at all times. So we have the water hag decoction either the Echimara or the Echidna. The Echimara, Echimara decoction is better and the Aracast decoction, those are your three decoctions and then you can use multiple potions on top of that so you can use Swallow for healing, you should always use Superior Tawny Owl and Superior Thunderbolt as the first two potions you use and then you can use other stuff like Golden Oriole for when you're fighting enemies that deal poisoning um, and that adds on to the poisoning resistance <coughs> that the Viper Armor already has and you can use things like Superior Full Moon to give you even more vitality it's a really versatile build, I love the fact that you can use all of the skills and signs and potions all at the same time. So that was the three slot version and here you'll see the two slot version and this also gives a demonstration of how you can use skill switching if you want to use that instead. So we've got the three pieces of Griffin armor there, like we say, with the Viper, um, but to use skill switching you've got acquired tolerance and metabolic control and the ability that we're taking off the build for the second slot uh, instead of having three slots is heightened tolerance. So we don't have heightened tolerance which means that you can't use potions without it hurting you and you can't use water hag and water hag decoction and potions together. So instead we'll just be using five decoctions to get 320 toxicity and get a bigger boost from euphoria. So the way you do that is if you've seen my skill switching excuse me, videos, you'll know how to do this already. So we equip the manticore uh, gear, so we've got the boots, the trousers and the manticore chest to boost the toxicity over 320. Apply the decoctions and then take the gear and skills off and we'll keep the decoctions active and the boost from euphoria. Like I say, although this can be used, I don't really feel it's necessary because the damage actually comes out much the same as the three slot version with heightened tolerance because with that version you're able to use more potions and particularly Thunderbolt which adds another 35% damage on. So for this particular build I would actually recommend the three slot version and that's a little less messing around in the menus and that's another advantage in this build's favour. So it's why I've been really enjoying it. But if you were to do it this way, you would just um, apply the decoctions and then switch back to the Viper chest and the Griffin gear. And then you've had two, th two free slots to play around with. So here we can add uh, Killing Spree and Poison Blades. Or you could put those spare two ability points we've got into Razor Focus and use that to further boost the Greater Red Mutagen. Things like that. So again, very versatile, a lot of fun. And that's the two slot version using skill switching. 
So the thing with this build is because of the really high monster and elemental resistances, things like wraiths and monsters do very, very little damage to you. So one of the things that I tried with this build was as soon as I'd got out of White Orchard, I got a couple of levels from White Orchard and the six places of power that are there. And as soon as I got to Velen, I actually went to start Hearts of Stone, uh, and you'll see that coming up in just a moment. So. Uh, one of the things that I just wanted to mention as well is there are other versions you can use if you want to go more combat instead of using the griffin set pieces. Uh, here this is a version with the manticore trousers and the manticore boots and the woven gauntlets instead of the griffin, although they are actually identical sets in terms of their stats and everything. So the manticore boots give plus 30 critical hit damage as well as increasing your toxicity by 5 and the manticore trousers give plus 10 toxicity and increase your critical hit chance by plus 5%. So that means that this build does even more damage with the strikes while still having enough toxicity to have four regular decoctions and thunderbolt on top of it. So that's really powerful because you can use the Ikamara decoction, the Warthag decoction and the Aracast decoction and then have another one on top of it. So you can go with Succubus or Wyvern to add even more attack power. You could use the Echidna so that when you use signs and use up your stamina it also gives you health back. And you can also use the Ancient Lesson Decoction if you wanted to give you even more stamina regen per in the fight when you're using Ard Sweep. So that's really useful. So again, we've got the core skills there of Acquired and Heightened Tolerance with Synergy and Protective Coating. And then you just spare some of the points in the red abilities and you would just finish those off in New Game Plus. So this is what I was talking about before. This is the extra slot version where you've used the double ability glitch. So refer to my previous videos to see how you do that. And we have the fourth strength and synapses slot already has acquired tolerance in it. Normally you would put synergy there, but either works. And that effectively gives you another strength and synapses slot. And this is at only level 57 with a recommended level 86 quest, which is the rune right quest. And these arachnomorphs are far in excess of what you should be able to take on at this point in the game. And here you'll see that my inventory is only actually uh, half full. So if you had it uh, less full, even uh, emptier than that, then you would be getting even more uh, damage resistance from Aracast decoction and these enemies would be doing even less damage. But as you can see here, even if I switch away from Erendite, I'm not even using the most powerful silver sword. We can easily take care of these enemies by burning them with Igni and by using random will to do damage. Because of the fact that I have the uh, Griffin bonus so that I can cast signs twice, I can always use Quen and Igni or Quen and Erden together uh, and that works really effectively. One of the other things is using the Ekimara decoction as your means of main means of healing. Not only does it from strikes but it also counts for the burning damage that you do to enemies with Igni. So here you see I'm taking on these Red Skull enemies which should be able to kill me in one hit. But I'm still able to burn them because of Euphoria, I'm still able to do good damage even though they out level me by 30 levels. And in a moment you'll see that even if I take a hit without Quen, I'm still only taking half damage instead of being able to straight knock me out. And as soon as you apply the burning effect from Igni, the damage from burning counts for the Ekimara decoction and you'll see how fast, uh, how quickly the health regenerates as well. And all the time I've got the six greater glyphs of mending so I'm always getting re uh, regeneration in the background anyway. So there you get pretty much back to full just from the burning damage that Igni does. You can also go straight to Skellige with this build as soon as you get to Velen. Again, level 57, the recommended quest level for going to Skellige in, new, in my, this version of my new game plus is level 70. And even so, I can take on these bandits with absolutely no problems whatsoever. I can always keep Quen up. If any of them have a club instead of a sword and do bludgeoning damage, I can just uh, use Quen to stop that damage as well. And here I am in Skellige, and this is on Death March. And before I've even gone and collected most of the places of power in Velen or Skellige, I've already got enough points from White Orchard and from leveling up a couple of times to pretty much finish off the build. Now this again is using the uh, three, three slot version, um, but it's using the extra ability glitch. So as soon as I open the third strength and synapses slot, I've effectively got all four of them open. So here you can see I'm level 58 and the build is pretty much entirely completed. And I'll be able to use that for the next 40 levels and finish all of New Game Plus with it. Right up until you can get the Grandmaster Viper Armor when you start Hearts of Stone in New Game Plus. So it's an extremely powerful build and it's a lot of fun because you have Rend and Whirl and Signs and Potions and it's just really versatile. It's a, just a slightly different take on the tank build. It stays effective all the way through New Game Plus and this is the level 100 version. So here you can see um, I've got Razor Focus instead of one of the uh, sign skills. So I found that as you get more points at your disposal, uh, Razor Focus is probably a little bit better than having the far-reaching Ard. 
and so this is the final version. So heightened tolerance, acquired tolerance, protective coating, synergy and killing spree are the green abilities that you use and they go in the euphoria slots. We've got art sweep and delusion and then we've got griffin school techniques on metabolic control as well as the seven red skills that are shown there. So uh, all of the whirl and rend skills and razor focus as well. So it's a very effective build. <coughs> You have a lot of options available, you can always keep Quen up and all you really have to watch out for is the bludgeoning damage and um, <coughs> you can just, like I say, keep Quen up to be able to take those hits anyway. And when you're fighting things like elementals or gargoyles, you can just use Erden and then use the Griffin perk to put Quen up straight away again and it remains very effective the whole way through. So yeah, uh, I really like this build and I'm very pleased with it and if you want to use the Viper armor that looks so good, this is... A really good one to think about using so uh, one of my favorite hybrid builds and I'm glad that I was able to show this video and hopefully you enjoy so we'll be continuing this uh, series there'll be a couple of other things I want to do uh, one of the ones that's coming up will be a manticore and uh, metamorphosis set which I've been having a lot of fun with working out as well and uh, there'll be a couple others before we go on to some other videos as well so thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, a really fun build, really versatile and uh, like I say really fallen in love with this one so uh, it's nice to be able to use the Viper armor with its high resistances and uh, actually make it a worthwhile build. So thank you for watching, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.